guys, Coach Enoch here at Team Florida Track Club. I want to give you guys a course preview of the Tom Walker Half Marathon. This is a great route that's an, mostly an out and back course on the Gainesville Hawthorne Trail. This is a, a route that a lot of us use for long runs, training runs, bike rides, or just general recreation since it's a great, beautiful path here in Gainesville. But what you might not know, is, even if you've raced this course or you haven't raced it, it's when, you, when you're not really thinking of the, you know, of a racing mindset, you often don't realize how challenging this route can be. There's quite a few hills through the hammock and how the course sets up with a downhill start to several hills in the first few miles and then a long flat in the middle and then hills at the end. It leads to a challenging course even though the overall elevation isn't that great. So I thought I'd give you a breakdown mile by mile, kind of what your mindset should be, how you should pace it to have your best race on race day. So let's get to it. This um, course profile is from when I did this race last year. I was using it as a tune-up run for the CIM Marathon. And it was a great course. It got me ready for the hills out in California. So um, what you'll see is when you, when you line up for this race is you're literally looking at a long straight downhill for the first mile. You can see in the first mile, you lose 33 feet of elevation. So you're just going straight down this nice long downhill. What this means is you should anticipate going out a little quicker than what you're hoping to average overall. So say you're hoping to run seven minute pace for, for the race, then maybe you should go out around 645 to 650 for this first mile, but it's also totally fine to just kind of even split this first mile, maybe just run you know seven minutes and, and keep it kind of light and warm, let your body warm up. For longer races, it's, it's never a bad idea to start a little conservative. But if you are out a little quick the first mile, the key is then is adjusting. Because what we're going to see is, if you take a look here in the second mile, this second mile actually has 34 feet of elevation gain, which is one of the greatest in the course. And that's what not a lot of people anticipate with this second mile is, um, you know, once you hit that mile, you have this little out and back that you do near the bathroom here. Um, and what happens is, on this stretch right here is, once you do that little out and back and you start heading towards the hills, it starts to climb this whole section here on the second mile. So you're already getting into a pretty difficult part of the course. So on the second mile, you quickly make up for that downhill. So it's really important to anticipate your second and third mile um, to lose a little bit of time, especially the second mile. Any that you gained on this first mile, say you know you went 650, you should probably give that back and some with this nice big climb. This is a tough mile in the course. So anticipate to slow down a little bit, kind of settle in, focus on your breathing, find your groove, and build that second mile. And then, as we get into the third mile, you'll see it starts by cresting this hill. So again, you're gonna be kind of going slow, getting to the top of this first hill, then you hit a little plateau, which is actually quite nice. You have this nice recovery, kind of find a groove again. Then a little build again. This is where you're getting through the final kind of crest of the hills um, on the first part of the course. And so what you're going to look for here on the third mile is you see it's about even elevation wise. It's kind of a nice steady control. This is where you should be starting to settle into your pace a little bit. Um, but then as you're in that third mile, you have a nice big downhill. And this is an area where you can make a mistake. Uh, you know, you have this nice flat area, you've recovered from the uphill, and often runners will, you know, they'll come up this little hill and then they'll charge down, maybe they're a little behind on pace or they're just feeling good since it's early in the race. Charging this big downhill can really pound your legs. So what I advise is using this downhill to further recover, take a couple deep breaths, clear the lungs, and then, you know, from there just kind of cruise down it. Don't worry about trying to gain a couple seconds there. Uh, you'll make up some time in the next flat section. So just kind of cruise that downhill. Then this is where we start getting into the more or less flat area of the course. Um, what you're going to look for is you have this nice long stretch. You can see here, you know, after you go through these nice big downhills here is you have pretty even elevation basically from, you know, mile six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. So this is the, you know, the out and back long stretch, you know, just nice kind of open it up. This is where you really find your groove. And what I recommend is for this section is where it's really important to focus on form, uh, find a good group to run with, you know, either if you're with your pace group or, you know, with a training partner or something like that. This is where you really start to find your groove uh, in these middle miles of the race. But the important part is that you don't get too carried away in this nice long flat section. What I will say is 
it's mostly flat, but it can be a little deceptive. There are a couple little, you know, ups and downs. So just kind of take those as they go. Don't force the pace on the slight rises and don't, you know, accelerate too much on the downs, but you can start to open it up, start to feel good. Um, generally, a good rule of thumb is you want to get through, you know, either between eight to nine miles in the half marathon, still feeling quite comfortable. If you're really hurting, you know, by mile four or five or six, often you're gonna be in trouble in a half marathon because there's still a long ways to go. So the goal is to kind of keep it comfortably hard, in control for this section. And again, kind of using that reference, if you were looking to average seven minute miles, maybe through this section, you know, you're making up a little time for the hills and you're kind of going slightly under race pace, but I really encourage you, you know, not to open it up and go off feel until you get through at least seven to eight miles, maybe even nine into the race if you're being a little conservative, and then you start to build down. But what makes this a tricky race is as you're starting to build down and, and work for home, you know, you're coming back on this, this hammock section here through the hills. So you really do need to have, have remained comfortable through this flat section or these hills are really going to, you know, to set you back and really slow you down. And we are anticipating that they're going to slow you down a little bit. But the key is, is coming into this area where you can finish, you know, this last 5K when you get to 10 miles here. You've got 5K to go, and it's got this pretty big, you know, this uh, the, the biggest hill on the course basically coming up. On the way back, this hill is even more difficult because you're running up this steep side. It's a long, steady grind, basically from 10 all the way up to, you know, 10.5, 10.6. It's almost a half a mile steady climb up here. So you really need to come into this still with some run left in the legs. So that's why it's important that you don't just go for broke in this nice, long, flat section and open it up. But what I do anticipate, what I, what I recommend for all the hills, especially this hill, is to make sure that you run the similar effort to what you were running this flat section in, but not a similar pace. Don't charge up this hill. Don't look to try to cape, you know, if you're running 655s or, you know, whatever your goal pace is, anticipate slowing down 20 to even 30 seconds per mile pace up this hill. Don't overwork it or you're really going to struggle these last couple miles in. So keep it controlled. Focus on form. Keep the arms moving up this hill. Once you crest it here at about 10.6, take this plateau, recover, and then this is where you can use this downhill. Don't be afraid to be a little more aggressive you know, than you were on the way out. On this downhill, you can start to come and, and push it you know, on this downhill section here. And then once you make it down this downhill, let that you know, be where you kind of recover. This is where you have the nice long gradual climb you know the final mile it's a long gradual climb what i recommend is this climb while it's a little daunting from a view perspective because when you're down here at the bottom you can kind of see all the way up almost you know almost a full mile you can see up the trail this long continuous thing to the finish line so what i recommend is you know you know you're closing in on the finish but don't look out ahead don't gaze at the finish and be like wow that looks like a long ways to go instead you know focus on the road ahead focus on on your breathing focus on your arms and you don't really need to save anything for this stretch just trust that your training and the work you put in will get you up this last part but the key is getting through these hills feeling good and, and finishing strong i hope you enjoyed this in-depth look at the Tom Walker race course. And if you'd like to join our team and come out and train with us, check us out at teamfloridatrackclub.com. Have a great race.